Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to take a look at the concept of the log mean temperature difference. So the log mean temperature difference is a different way of expressing the temperature difference within a heat exchanger when the difference in the temperature isn't constant throughout the entire system. So if we look at the temperature difference here of Ti minus T0, so Ti is the inlet temperature and T0 is the outlet temperature. And this is our equation for Q. So we have Q equals Ua delta T. Now this is for a constant temperature drop. So from the start, say the temperature drop was 10 degrees of a difference, that would remain constant throughout the entire heat exchanger. So at each point, if this is the inlet and this is the outlet, at every given point, the temperature difference between the streams is 10. If that is not the case, we cannot use this uh, temperature difference. We need to use the log mean temperature difference. Now, the, the delta T is usually just Ti minus T naught. However, we're going to then use delta T M, and this stands for delta T log mean. It sometimes can have an LM as well. And this applies over the entire apparatus of the system. So we take the inlet conditions and we take the outlet conditions and we take a log mean. So it's an average of the difference. Now we use the differential balance and then we integrate over the entire length of the heat exchanger to show that we have a logarithmic mean temperature with a suitable mean value because at the end of the day we can't account so if we have a long heat exchanger and say at the inlet so this is the inlet here and this is the outlet then say here the delta t is um, 20 degrees then it fluctuates and delta t becomes 18 then delta t becomes 12 delta t becomes and then say it rises back up to 20 degrees then we can't profile every single section because this could fluctuate constantly and if we have a large piece of apparatus then this could be a massive calculation so that's why we take the mean value we take the conditions at the start the conditions at the end and then we average them out now there is two types of systems that we're going to consider here we're going to consider counter current flow and co-current flow and we're going to see why and how the counter current flow is a better option and is the most suitable option and widely used within the industry so we're going to look at co-current first now co-current is when the flow the direction of flow for both fluids is in the same direction so regardless of which one is heating and what one is cooling, both fluids are travelling, in this case, from left to right. So we have our delta T1 is the difference in the temperature at the inlet, so this is our inlet section, where they become in contact, not direct contact, but the streams become in contact with each other. And then delta T2 is the outlet conditions. So again, this is our Q equation, so Q equals U8 delta T L M. So we should have the overall heat transfer coefficient. We will have the surface area. So we just need to find delta T L M. Now, delta T L M is given by this expression here. And we're going to see how we have derived this equation. And again, this is for uh, co-current systems. So our inlet temperature, or this plot here, is the temperature versus the distance. So the distance here is from this point to this point here. So this is our x. x increases as we go in this direction. Now the temperature, so T1, this is our temperature uh, line. So this is for our uh, temperature here. So this will be at this point, And then this temperature on this stream will be on this line. So again, it doesn't matter because this is a very generic system. Now what we have is the difference in the temperatures at the inlet are significantly different. So delta T1 is massive compared to delta T2, which is to be expected because if we have, say, cooling water coming in at um, 15 degrees and we have a stream that needs cooled at 100, deg 100 degrees, then we have a significant difference in temperature. But as it travels through the heat exchanger, the difference in temperature becomes a lot smaller because they will get closer and closer to each other 
as they establish um, the exchange of heat. Now again, remember that the driving force for heat transfer is the temperature difference. So here at the beginning of the system, even probably up to halfway, we have a high driving force for heat transfer. So this is a favourable condition. However, when we get to this point, when the values become very, very close, the rate of heat transfer is considerably smaller because the difference in the temperatures is very small. So if we have a small delta T value here, if we were to pop that in there, we would get a small Q. Whereas if we had a very high delta T value and we popped it in here, we would get a very high Q value. So you can see that the difference in the temperatures of the streams, the greater it is, the better the heat transfer rate. So essentially what we are then going to say here is that we're going to take the log mean temperature is equal to the delta T2, so that is the difference in the temperature at the outlet. So that's going to be TH0, sorry, THO, so that's the hot temperature out, minus the cold temperature out. So that's at this point here. We take the difference in these temperatures and then at T1 it's going to be the inlet hot temperature minus the cold inlet temperature. That would be here. And then that would give us our delta T1. Now our equation is the difference between delta T2 minus delta T1 divided by the log of the ratio of delta T2 over delta T1. And that's just a formula that you will have to uh, try and remember. It's a straightforward um, equation. It's the log mean temperature difference. And these delta T1 and delta T2 um, are the inlets and the outlets respectively. Now that is for a co-current system. If we look at a counter-current system, then we can see that the difference, the, the difference in the temperature between the hot and the cold streams is very, very, it's not as polarized as this system where we have a massive de delta T value compared to very small at the outlet. We have a almost uniform system. We have a delta T1 of this magnitude and delta T2, while it is smaller, it isn't as small as this. So this would still have a better rate of heat transfer than this value here. So again, you can see that the, the difference in the temperatures remains at almost a constant delta T value. If it was completely the same, the size of delta T1 and delta T2, you wouldn't need the log mean uh, temperature difference. You would just keep it as delta T. However, there is a slight difference because the, the change we will assume isn't a linear change. So that's why we have a slight closer temperatures at delta T2 for the outlets compared to delta T1 on the inlets. So what we would have here is this is our inlet of either the hot or the cold, we'll say the uh, the cold. So the cold comes in and then it begins to heat up and it starts to take away, this is the hottest part of the system. So then it heats up gradually, but it tries to maintain a good delta T value all throughout the heat exchanger so that we get a more efficient um, heat transfer system. And that's why a lot of the time the the equipment and industry is always counter current flow because we get a better delta T log mean value because we don't have such a polarized um, temperature distance profile. And again, the, the, the equations of delta T1 and delta T2 are this time, if we consider delta T1, this is going to be the inlet of the halt. So this would be inlet of the halt minus the outlet of the cold because this is the outlet of the cold, inlet of the hot. And then delta T2 is the outlet of the hot, so that would be here and here, minus the inlet of the cold. So that's the inlet of the cold here, and that's this value here. So this overall gives us a better uh, log mean temperature difference compared to the co-current flow. And that is the basis and the, the theory that goes behind the log mean temperature difference. So when you are given a problem 
and you know that you don't have a uniform temperature difference throughout your heat exchanger, you must use the log mean temperature difference. And that is your equation, and you have to then base it on are we dealing with counter current or co current flow, and adjust the delta T1 and delta T2 equations respectively. So that's the end of this lesson. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful in understanding the concept of the log mean temperature difference. If you liked this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us reach as many chemical engineering students as possible. Thank you for your time and we hope to see you in another video.